Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Um, today we are continuing work on our uh, MUN station, and the very first thing we're doing is backing this uh, module here off because I'm kind of rearranging how the station is going to be put together. Uh, I, I generally mock these things up in the vehicle assembly building before I launch them, but I made some changes to the design. They've been uh, reflected in my version in the vehicle assembly building, but now I actually have to execute those changes here. So uh, first things first, we just need to uh, undock that, get it out of the way. We're going to use the, uh, the moon shuttle thingy to uh, actually move some of the stuff around because uh, it has, you know, thrusters and whatnot, and it has a decent amount of torque, so it shouldn't have too much problem uh, doing this. And it's a little bit more maneuverable than the uh, shuttle that goes back and forth between Kerbin and here, so uh, I figured, you know, the smaller size would probably be somewhat useful. So we're just trying to drift away here sideways without crashing into anything. And uh, Megjeb really doesn't like this design as far as docking goes. I think it's because it has three uh, RCS thrusters instead of four, and it kind of confuses Megjeb's auto docking stuff, so I have to do a lot of this maneuvering manually, which is moderately annoying at times, but it's not too much of a problem. I just like to use Megjeb for docking because it makes life a lot simpler. It's not that I can't dock, it's just that I've been playing this game for years now and I get kind of sick of doing it, so I don't mind having to manually do stuff once in a while, but um, I'm kind of at a point where I can't really update the game too, because uh, mainly because of the Interstellar pack um, that's not being updated currently, so I, I believe I'm like one and a half versions behind the current version of the game, so it's a little bit problematic, but not too bad. But, uh, at this point, we're just flipping around the other direction, trying to get this done well uh, before that uh, inflatable ring drifts too far away here. Basically, um, I, I believe what we're doing here is just we're going to slide over and uh, dock on the end of that module. The, the issue here is that I need a little bit more space. Uh, there's a docking, if you can see there's a couple docking ports set up on that, uh, on those crew cans in the front there. And basically, they're just a little bit too close uh, for what I want to do. So I'm going to use the uh, the ring back there to actually uh, get this a little bit further away from the space station. You'll see what I mean when we actually get it done here. But uh, as you can see, I do not have the autopilot enabled because uh, it was just freaking out, so I manually docked. It was not the prettiest docking ever, but it got the job done. And uh, you can see right near my mouse cursor there. Uh, that's what I'm talking about, those docking adapters there. So we're just going to uh, back this thing off again. Just get clear of the station. Switch back over to the other vessel and complete that docking and then redock this. So uh, generally, like I said, I like to plan these things out better so it's not so annoying to deal with, but not always possible. So. Anyway, it's time for this guy to shine, and I believe Mechjeb can dock this thing just fine, so we'll let Mechjeb handle that. It really only has problems with uh, that one. Well, no, it's kind of going crazy there, too. I don't know, it just randomly has issues. I think it's got this, though. Hopefully. Maybe. Possibly. I, I'm, I'm, about, I'm pretty sure it's it's not asymm asymmetrical RCS. It's just not in a pair of fours. I think that's why it has problems with the other one. I may end up retrofitting that ship at some point to make it a little bit more automated. So, uh, you know, we're just sliding in. This infl inflatable ring, you actually have to leave a fairly decent amount of room. I'm kind of thinking about putting a centrifuge on every one of my space stations that's not around Kerbin. Um, just because that way they get to uh, experience some gravity. I imagine the Kerbals are, are jogging around the outside of it 2001 style, you know, trying to keep their... Uh, their their muscle mass or whatever Kerbals have. I, I assume they have some sort of muscle mass going uh, to, you know, to negate some of the effects of zero G, make their lives a little bit easier when they actually do have to come back to Kerbin or go anywhere really, if there's gravity that's affecting them. And uh, a little bit close here with the other ship, but I think we're clear. Like I said, this uh, inflatable ring gets pretty big. Uh, when I was experimenting with it on the launch pad, uh, just to see how it actually inflated. 
Uh, I broke some stuff trying to inflate this thing. Actually, it's 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 a little worrying. Oh man, that solar panel probably came pretty close to the other ship. Not that I really care that much, but I just noticed that that rotated kind of violently. But um, like I was saying, uh, it's a little surprising how big this thing gets, and I am somewhat concerned, or I was somewhat concerned that it wasn't going to clear that little transmission thingy that I have up there with the radiators on it. But I believe it clears it. And man life's good with Mech Jeb. Except for the fact that it fires every thruster on the station, but uh, we're pretty much done with this uh, craft here, so I'm gonna just transfer some fuel. I try to make it a habit every time I bring any sort of ship up here that's not gonna be reused to transfer fuel back out of it, because you know, it's not a lot of fuel, but it does add up, and it prevents me from having to do quite as many refueling missions and stuff. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of nice. Free fuel, pretty much. And we can deorbit this thing just using RCS. It's not a problem. I don't have any large fuel tanks on this space station yet, so I'm a little bit limited in how much fuel I can actually hold, but we drain that thing dry, so good enough. And fortunately, the, uh, the crew can seem to be pretty much just holding station pretty well off to the side there. So we're going to go ahead and undock this bad boy and uh, crash it into the moon just so we don't have any danger of things colliding because I am slightly concerned about that. We do have a lot of things floating around and uh, rather than just leave this drifting while I dock the other thing, it's better to get it clear completely. Don't want its orbit coming back around. And uh... I had not yet experimented with the um, impactor probes. I do do that later. It would have been, you know, kind of a useful thing at this point, but eh. So we're just trying to get a path that's clear of the other vessel here. Kind of go down a little bit. I like to use the Smart ASS to hold retrograde just because it's a lot easier than having to manually do it. And uh, we'll just buzz by here at an alarming speed and uh, send this thing on its merry little way down to a one-way, you know, one-way trip down to the surface here. Yeah, I'm not going to follow it down, but just make sure that we get our periapsis down into the surface so we know for sure it crashes. And hopefully we're still close enough to switch back, and we were. Cool. So um, I'm going to see how it handles now with the... Um, mech jeb docking now that it has a, a larger mass I think it actually might do better uh, it's a little unpredictable how these things are gonna go so I don't remember how it actually worked let's see here this is post commentary of course and I'm turning on the RCS balancer because sometimes that helps and sometimes it doesn't it looks like right now it's just kind of confused and freaking out and yeah it just it doesn't know what to do so I think we'll probably have to manually fly this thing, at least get it lined up kind of manually. Alright, so we're uh, at this point closing in. I did do some manual adjustments. I turned on and off the uh, RCS balancer. It helped sometimes, it didn't help other times. But uh, the thing actually does seem to handle a little bit better with this large mass on the front for whatever reason. So MegJub seems pretty capable now because we're just kind of, I got to a point where it's more or less straight ahead. So uh, the the most important thing I find with MegJub is the, the force roll for assembling space stations. It makes life a lot easier. It usually gets it within one degree of actually being aligned the way that I want it to. So uh, I generally like to always dock if possible using uh, MegJub for these space station components just because especially for solar panels and stuff it's really annoying trying to line things up I've actually kind of changed my policy on solar panels now where I used to build the modules like little solar arrays and stuff and dock those separately but I pretty much try to just design things so that they're permanently attached it's not as realistic I'll end up launching some ridiculous looking things that would never actually fly but it does save me a whole lot of headache regarding uh, trying to get those things aligned because solar panels are the main thing you're going to notice if you're going to notice something it's going to be a solar panel not being aligned correctly and uh, we're going in at a, a really slow speed the the reason is that it handled better I turned down the speed as you can see there for the docking I think it usually goes in at like five meters per second or something ridiculous like that and uh, 
at this it might only be one meter per second but it's really fast so uh, I was trying to go in at a slower speed because I figured I'd have a better chance of Mech Jeb not flipping out and screwing everything up and uh, it's kind of painful but I think we're gonna get this thing docked before sunset which is the important thing it is always kind of annoying trying to get stuff done in the dark there's never enough light come on close the gap there it's probably like a slightly more realistic docking speed it's still probably a lot faster than what they would actually do but... and magnets no maybe what is going on there they go yay so I just I always end up doing the time warp <laughs> like Rocky Horror uh, no I end up doing the the time warp trick there because space stations flex horrifically when you dock stuff sometimes but let's go ahead and blow this thing up and uh, like I said it's kind of ridiculous how much inflating happens here and I was worried that it was gonna collide but it just barely clears that I think it technically might clip into it actually but it doesn't seem to mind so whatever good enough so yeah now they have a nice little place to exercise and experience some actual gravity here so uh, go ahead and just undock this thing and go park it back on the other side of the station alright so we're back at the space center and uh, we are going to be launching another part of the station at this point uh, as you can see, it's one of the ginormous life support containers. Uh, I actually really don't like these. I've stopped using these in my space stations. Um, this one still has one. I actually intend to send up some empty uh, containers and to use just the standard TAC life support stuff because uh, these things are really unwieldy and heavy for some reason. They weigh a lot more than the, the same amount of uh, life support and the TAC system would weigh, it would seem. It's really hard to launch these in a stable fashion, I've found. The thing tends to just let them like, flip out and stuff. And I don't have like uh, the aerodynamics installed or anything, so it's just because of weird weight issues and stuff. But here we are out at the MUN. I just skipped the whole transfer and stuff because you've seen it before. We're just uh, coming in nice and easy here. And uh, this is a little bit unstable here. Again, the weight is kind of a problem, but... Uh, I do like to launch these things full because otherwise it takes a whole bunch of launches just to refill the thing. Uh, I have a feeling you're probably supposed to launch it empty. And uh, see, MechJeb just doesn't know what to do. Stupid MechJeb. Come on, MechJeb. Alright, it's got it. But like I was saying, uh, you're probably meant to launch them empty and just fill them up or something. But I don't feel like running that many supply missions. Like, the life support pack is fun and all, but I don't want to spend all my time just doing resupply missions either to a degree I do but not that much all right so another module installed and uh, they have food now which is good because you know they need food and water and stuff we don't actually have the uh, carbon recycler the carbon filter or the water filter on the station yet but uh, it's not a huge deal we're still very close to uh, carbon here so it's not a big deal to send stuff up now this is actually not going to the space station this is a kind of an experimental craft. I want to get some readings from close around the sun. So we're sending this thing up uh, to get close to the sun, basically. It's got a whole bunch of solid rocket boosters to try to give it a lot of thrust here at the beginning. I reduced the thrust on those. I don't remember what level. I think it was like 50 or 70% or something like that. Uh, just to get a little bit longer of a burn out of them. Uh, the thing's kind of heavy and whatnot, but um, it's using one of the... Uh, I forget which kind of thruster it is. One of the interstellar thrusters. I think it's like a, it's basically like a fancy uh, ion engine. Uh, I've learned that these things are horrifically underpowered. I actually haven't even had to use this engine on this ship yet, uh, even up to where I'm playing now. But uh, I launched another probe using this engine, and I just don't have enough uh, electrical power, megajoules, to make these things actually work yet. I really need to get the beamed power going and all that stuff before these things are really going to be any sort of viable system because when you have the reactor on board and uh, the low amount of power that the reactors can currently make right now it's really just in inefficient and 
doesn't get a lot done. It's fairly disappointing. But, uh, you know, uh, it will get the job done eventually. It's one of the times that I'm glad I have mech job because I can just let it burn. If it takes, like, you know, two days of game time, I'll just let it burn while I'm at school or something like that. And when I come back, it's generally done. Now, this launch uh, is a little bit unwieldy. You can see the rocket's kind of wibbling around. Wibbling? It's wobbling. It's wobbling is what it's doing. Um, so, we're going to kind of watch it for a little while just to make sure it goes okay. Uh, these kind of launches are always tense when it's kind of a new launch vehicle. Those solid rocket boosters are going for days, man. Just days and days and days. And I think, unfortunately, I didn't stage them right. I'm looking at the little staging diagram there. Those nose cones have uh, little uh, solid rocket boosters. They're supposed to push them away from the, the main body of the craft. But I believe I had them all staged wrong and they fired when we were on the ground. So that's unfortunate, but it doesn't really matter because we're really high up now. So uh, they should get a decent kick just from the decouplers. Still came pretty close, though. That was a little bit too close. Yeah, those are supposed to, the nose cones are supposed to have little uh, jets that fire that separate everything. So we still get a lot of fuel in this. We're going to get up into a fairly high orbit here, uh, 400 kilometers. And the reason being, I just want to make sure we're out of the way of everything else. Uh, the nice thing about launching the sun is that there's really no like launch window. You just kind of go when you feel like going, I guess. So that's a, a benefit. Uh, the bad thing about going as close as we're going to try to get to the sun is that it requires ludicrous amounts of Delta V. But as you can see, Mech Jeb says we have ludicrous amounts of Delta V. The thing that Mech Jeb does not say is how horrible the thrust is going to be because uh, of our lack of power. But we'll, we'll get to that at some point. As you can see, there's kind of three little fuel tanks on this thing too. So the initial part of the burn is going to be done. The uh, thinking was... Uh, we'll use this, of course, this main rocket just to get into orbit and stuff and use whatever we have left in that. But the uh, the actual transfer that we do down to the, the low sun orbit, uh, a lot of that's going to be done with this uh, larger uh, liquid fuel stage. I believe it's a, I believe I put a Nerva engine on a nuclear uh, engine. And uh, I'm trying to get as much of that done with actual fuel as possible because I knew that, I didn't know it was going to be as bad as it ended up being, but... I knew that we weren't going to be getting the best thrust to weight ratio out of it, so while we were close and time mattered, I wanted to get that done. Unfortunately, the uh, little cowling thing uh, didn't really separate from the engine, so we'll just have to do the good old-fashioned uh, manual decoupling, also known as just burning with the thing in place until it overheats. So we have solar panels, we have uh, radiators deployed. Uh, they're probably not going to be sufficient for when we start getting closer to the sun. I think those solar panels are going to pick up an awful lot of heat when we get closer to the sun uh, due to inverse square law and all that stuff. But uh, I suppose we'll figure that out as we get close. And we're coming off on our burn here. And it's like I said, it's kind of one of those fun burns where you have to blow up part of the ship to get it to work. I didn't really realize that this was going to work quite this way, but it did. And come on, is it gonna burn? Eh, there it goes. So yeah, uh, no thrust right now, of course, because that has to overheat and explode. But we got temperatures going up. There's the overheat warning on the decoupler, and now we can go. <laughs> so you can kind of see how this thing works. So this is going to do the majority of the burning. Those uh, fuel tanks are meant to drain first. But uh, we'll get this transfer to the sun done in the next episode. Thanks for watching.